I like, you know, put a medication in my IV to regulate my blood pressure. Yeah. Um, and that medication within 30 seconds made me super nauseous. I was like, I'm feeling nauseous. No, 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 I'm like about to throw up. And <laughs> Hey guys, it's Alice here back with another doula reacts to a birth vlog video and today we are looking at Amanda Daniels birth vlog. Amanda and her partner have agreed to let us use this video for a teaching tool and for us all to learn from a real life birth. So let's jump in. Hello, my name is Amanda and I'm currently 40 weeks pregnant and a couple of days. So, so going past your due date I'm is really common, especially if it's the actually, first time that you have given birth. We are just patiently waiting for our baby boy. Um, I was woken up at 3 a.m. this morning with pretty heavy contractions. Um, they were the first painful contractions that I felt, so it was kind of exciting, but also so it looks really like scary labor started overnight, which is very common. This is a lot of times people really are woken up by contractions. Go to Target soon. Um, it's a very common and, um, time. As soon as that sun goes down, it's really missing. a lot of times um, we see most of everything labor is start. already packed. Luckily, looks so like that was 3 a.m., um, which is crazy. All right, fam. Now we're joining so, them. It's like Nathan and I are many on a hours walk. later. It is 4:30. Walk. On walking is great in labor Saturday, December especially 5th. if it's a beautiful and day, which it looks like they've got a beautiful day there continuing. for their birth. They haven't stopped their labor, but they also haven't gotten any more consistent. Really painful. <laughs> um, What's going on? I know this technique. So we call this curb walking. She doesn't have a great curb in her area. Usually if, if it's a more distinct curve, but she's trying. So curb walking, the, the reason behind it is to try to change up the pelvis, help the baby move down. So, you know, giving, if you can imagine, when you're on the curb, you're sort of moving up with one side more than the other. So thumbs up, great technique. Currently 6, 19 p.m. And the contractions are getting really painful and a lot closer together. Um, let me show you guys what this tracker is okay. looking like. So, so they are. It looks like the sunset. It's later. You're about a minute long each, and about five minutes. Contractions getting each, closer together and painful. That's a good sign. We so we know if before we go to contractions the breathing center. are progressing, the breathing they're getting longer, about an hour stronger, away, and closer so, together. Um, so I don't want to, you know, that's too long, that's one way when we're laboring at home to know whether or not way because we're, we're making any progress, early, especially if um, you know it's an hour drive back home. So I am gonna start packing. To hello, um, it is. I'm in a lot of pain. We're on our way to the birthing center. I'm really nervous that they're going to turn us away because I'm not dilated enough. Um, so it sounds like quite a bit of time passed between that last um, update and this update before they went to the birthing you know, center. Um, Hello, oh, so it's morning update. time now. Um, this is not the update that I thought I would be giving you guys. But Nathan and I got to the birthing center at around 4.30 this morning and um, I was in a lot of pain, I was having contractions five minutes apart, lasting for a minute for well over an hour and um, when I got to the birthing okay. center I was only three centimeters dilated which so was not good news because in order to be admitted I needed to be at least five to six, five to six centimeters. So um, they let me wait in the waiting room for a couple hours, just to hopefully progress. After two hours, I'd only progressed to four centimeters. Luckily, they still let me be admitted because I had shown progress. Um, 
However, once I was admitted, I just tried to like relax. I took a shower. I did everything I could to like just really continue to progress and soften my cervix so that I can continue to dilate. And um, I was not progressing after about two hours. So I was still at four, four centimeters. So at that point, yeah, they yeah. started talking about options of like whether I wanted to go back home and continue to labor at home or whether I wanted to go to the hospital um, and just, you know, be induced there. Um, and at this point, I'm in so much pain. Nathan and I have been up since for over 24 hours. Asleep. We woke up at 3.30 last night. It's yesterday rough. morning um, with really strong contractions I've been having contractions wow. consistently for the past over 24 hours I'm in pain I'm tired I just want to have this baby I want to meet our son and although this isn't what I had envisioned for my birth I I'm happy that we have options and that ultimately yeah. this is a decision that I got to make and I think it's the best decision for us because like I said I want to meet our son so we're pulling up to the hospital now our midwife gets to come with us which is really nice um, she'll be there to deliver the baby oh my god and <laughs> um, Hopefully everything goes well. Uh, we'll keep so you guys much. updated once Worked we get so set. hard already. Let me just pause for a second. So this is not uncommon. A lot of birth centers have different um, stipulations for whether or not you can birth there. So uh, like this birthing center, it sounds like she needed to be making progress at least five centimeters in order to stay at the birth center. So they gave her the option. They suggested she could go home and labor there still, or she could go to the hospital. And um, if you're not familiar, hus the hospital has options that the birth center doesn't. So hospitals have an option for epidurals. They have an option for Pitocin to speed up labor to help contractions get stronger. And those options are not at a birth center. So I imagine that she is going to the hospital maybe to take advantage of some of the options that she doesn't have at the birth center and I know that her midwives she said suggested that she or not suggested but gave her the option of going home but that is such a hard route to take when you're already so tired and you don't you're already doing all that you can do you know I feel like that's what I'm seeing like she's just she's just doing just giving her everything so strong and um, she just needs to take advantage of some tools that are available at the hospital, which uh, is sounds like a great decision. And I love, I love that her midwife is able to come with her. That is not always the case when you transfer from a home birth or a birth center, any out of hospital birth into the hospital. It really varies uh, by where you live and your care provider. So in her case, that's great. So she already has someone that is familiar with her and, and her um, care, which is very um, good. So yeah, so on to the hospital it is. Now we're, uh, we're looking at for the sake of the health of our baby and the health of Amanda and that's it. They're making the right decision for them. Wow. It's very clear, even if it's hard. Even if it's hard. Today has been really emotional. You've seen me get emotional already. Um, but it just hasn't been at all what I expected. Um, and I'm just learning that I have to get better at surrender and trusting the Lord. Um, because, you know, I don't have control of any of this stuff. When I got here, I was having really painful contractions, and if you know me at all, you know that I'm all about natural health and wellness, and I had made the decision early on to deliver at a birthing center and do it all natural, um, 
and those plans changed really quickly when, you know, today happened. Um, so we came to the hospital and um, I made the decision to get an epidural, which is crazy. I never thought that that would even cross my mind, and it did. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> um, that I'm is okay. Just to give myself And that is okay. That. Absolutely. Um, Use the tools you have. But the crazy thing you is I was so scared. That yellow piece the right there, epidural. that is just because um, of the possible the top of the epidural and I never catheter. take medication and so I just didn't know how my body would react. It was just really overwhelming. The doctor was great or the anesthesiologist was great. Everything went as it should have, but immediately after the epidural, my blood pressure dropped um, significantly, oh, and so the nurses like scrambled and they like, you know, put a medication in my IV to regulate my blood pressure, um, and that yeah. medication within 30 seconds made me super nauseous. I was like, I'm feeling nauseous. No, no, no. I'm like about to throw up, and then I threw up. Um, it was kind of gnarly, and it just, because I was already so scared of the epidural, it just really shook me, um, to, like, have my blood pressure drop, and then them give me another medication, and then that medication not sit well with me. It was just, like, so much all at once, and oh my gosh. I just it, broke down <laughs> crying. So much all at once, best Amanda, you... Ever. Um, just you so have supported. put that in a um, nutshell. So let me pause it again. The most common risk of an epidural is that quick drop in blood pressure. And sometimes that quick drop of blood pressure uh, requires that you have another medication to speed up your heart. heart. Really, well, it raises your heart rate to bring your blood pressure back up. That whole situation can sometimes um, cause people to get nauseous. So like Amanda said, she got nauseous, she threw up. And it shook her. It was, she said it was gnarly. Uh, and wow, what a great way to describe that. I mean, gnarly. Yeah. I mean, this when this episode that she's talking about, she doesn't give the exact time frame, but I've seen it before, and it usually happens quickly, like within the first 15 minutes, 10 minutes after you get an epidural. If you're going to have that reaction, it happens. Or, I, I mean, within the first hour, let's just say, but it feels really quick because it's like, oh no, blood pressure's dropping, get medication, feel sick, do, 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 all together kind of bing, bing, bing. Gnarly, a lot, and it, she said it shook her. So, um, and then she mentions what a supportive partner she has in uh, Nathan, and wow, partners, that is a great time to really step in and make sure that you're close by Make sure that you're telling your partner that it's going to be okay getting through this hurdle and, um, you know, we'll get to the other side of it. So, whew, she's been through it. She's got, she's, she's strong. She's dealing with some, some, you know, challenges, but we're still, still moving That's forward. we're so. at right now. She's going to check in again at two o'clock. It's currently 1245, so she's going to be coming in a little bit over an hour to check if I've progressed. And at that point, if I'm still at four centimeters, then we'll talk about potentially getting Pitocin or something like that. Great. Ah, uh, such good news. Sometimes getting an epidural is just the tool that you need to help your body um, get into a progress uh, and progress through a good labor pattern. How much do I love this music? Okay, I love this so much. I'm a big believer in using music as a tool for labor. Nathan, her partner, said that that was a special song for them. Amazing. And the fact that he's fanning her is like one of my favorites because favorite coping techniques, you get so hot when it's time to push. And it looks like she's feeling quite an urge to push. Yeah, that's great. Which can be hard sometimes when you have an epidural that if you still feel that kind of pressure, but it does usually help push, help you focus that pushing feeling 
uh, I think it's a really good example of how you can still feel sensation. You might still feel a sensation when you have an epidural. Um, a lot of times people are very um, confused about why am I feeling something now? Don't I have an epidural? But it, it's hard to take away that feeling of the baby right there in the birth canal. That pressure. So it's usually more of a pressure. He's going to come out with no chin and a beard. Are you ready? I love how Nathan push, 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 is right push. there focused, speaking encouraging, not yelling. Um, it looks like maybe he has some washcloths over there on the side, which I'm a great believer job. in that as well. Great job. Really great Incredibly support. I love seeing such great support. Oh, Double notice the two women behind Nathan. Up. They are probably uh, baby nurses that have come in for the delivery, just for an extra set of hands if there's anything wrong with the baby. They're standing right there by the warmer, and they're really just waiting. They, they jump in after the baby's born and usually help assess the baby, and if there's any reason that the baby needs any kind of um, attention, they'll be there. Good. Yes. You're so good. Good job, sweetie. Good job. Here comes this. Good job, sweetie. Good. Pretty soon. Give me a little push. Good. Good job. Is it coming out? Yes, his head is out. The midwife is giving some specific directions to help Amanda. Push and not tear. Sweetie, the way it's coming. Congratulations. Here we go. Oh my gosh, this is not real. So there's the baby nurses that we saw. Oh. I love, I, I'm not even commenting on it because I'm mesmerized, but she's skin to skin, baby skin to skin. Um, oh, look there. Nathan is cutting the cord. Great video of the cord cutting. Oh, what a beautiful baby. I love that when the baby was born, they had her gown pulled up right skin to skin, and then a nurse helped take her gown off so that they could get that skin to skin. So important. What a strong, strong birthing team. Great example. Thank you to Amanda Daniels for allowing us to witness such a beautiful birth and learn from it as well because great example of dealing with challenges and just rolling with them and and you know making the best of what you're given in labor and choosing making making decisions that are right for you. Maybe before you had the baby before you went into labor when you were thinking about it, those might not have been the decisions you think you would make, would make, but you've got to make the decisions at the time that you're going through it and, you know, make, make appropriate decisions at the time. And that, they did an awesome job at that. So if you want to see, which I encourage you to do, see the whole video from Amanda Daniels down below. I've got a link to her channel. I have got a link to the original video. And if you have not seen Jessica and Chad's birth vlog, I would love for you to check it out here. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.